So, hey everyone, in this session, we are very quickly going to go and have a look at how to go and create Terraform files or the Terraform script while you are appearing for the interviews. First thing that you should always do is you should always go and have or install Visual Studio Code inside your machines. Pretty straightforward. Just go for Visual Studio Code. Go and download based on your operating system. Go and download. And once you have it ready, you will be seeing something like this coming up or the Visual Studio Editor coming up in front of you. My suggestion would be go and create a folder up front where you can go and work on the Visual Studio code and that is specific folder of Terraform. So in my case, I'll be creating a folder inside my desktop, which I'll be calling it as let's say Terraform. And once that is done, you can just go and drag and drop the same thing inside your interviews or inside your Visual Studio code while you are appearing for the interviews. First thing that you always want to do is create a TF file pretty straightforward. Just click on new file over here, name it something like, let's say infra.tf. After this, once you do this, you are going to see the HashiCorp logo coming up over here, which basically means that you are all set to start off with your scripting. Whenever you have to go and create any of the resources, ideally the resources of creating the VPCs or the subnets or the gateways, instances, S3 bucket, AMIs, and the network interfaces are generally the things which will be asked to you in the interviews. So you should actually understand that better. But even if you don't, no worries. No one expects you to know everything. So what you can do is just go and Google for, let's say, AWS Terraform EC2 at least you should understand what exactly you should go and search for. And ideally just going and copy pasting this thing as it is should be good for you. So let's take an example. If I go and copy this complete block as it is inside my file, this basically is telling that I have my VPC, which I am naming it as my underscore VPC. I might as well name it as VPC hyphen home. The CIDR block I am keeping, let's say 10 slash, let's say 24 then i have to name it so i'll just go and name it the same that i named it over here by this name you can go and put any block next up you have to go and create a subnet this is aws keyword you should be more focused on this one so let's call it as private hyphen subnet now because my vpc was 10 22 i'll just go and name it by something let's say slash 24, which I will be putting it inside US West 2A. And because I named it as private subnet over here, the same thing I'll be naming it over here as it is. Remember, it's not mandatory. However, these are the tags. Keeping the names generally the same is actually going to help you. One important thing is because you named it as VPC hyphen home over here, this thing should also be as it is. So you have created a private subnet. Let's say you want to go and create a public subnet as well. Just go and put it as public over here. Obviously, you need to go and change the blocks over there. If required, you can change the AZs as well. Because I named it as a public subnet here, I will name it as a public subnet here as well. We'll go on and compress these things so that we can go down. Next up is my network interface. Let's call it as a public hyphen ENI or elastic network interface. This has to be part of my subnet, which is AWS underscore subnet. I am naming it as private hyphen subnet. So I'll just go and replace it with private hyphen subnet. Because my block is 10 24 what I'll do is I'll just go and give it a name corresponding to that. We should not go and take the addresses which are inside the reserve block, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, and 255. So I'm just giving it something like this. And because I named it, public hyphen ENI over here, I will just go and name it as it is over here to avoid confusion. Finally, we have to go and create an instance. Let's call it as instance hyphen one over here. Here I'll go and pass on the AMI ID. It's ideally advisable to ask the interviewers about the AMI IDs, which they are asking for. More often than not, they will ask you to assume anything. So you can just go and assume anything as AMI XX and YYY. Next up is your instance type. You can are free to choose any instance. My advice generally go with M5 large instance, which generally is used in the production environments in AWS. Next up comes your network interface ID. You are choosing your network interface ID with the ID that you had created, which was public hyphen ENI 
and as it is, and you are adding it at device index of zero. Finally, the credit specification will come to you in case you are going for a bus table instance. If it is not the case, like for me, it is M5 large, I am choosing it as it is. This is your Terraform file that is expected from you in the interviews. So it's pretty easy. Just remember to have the Visual Studio code ready. And before giving the interviews, it's advisable to go and have a look at these scripts over here. Common ones are VPC and the ones which I have told you earlier. That's it for today. I'll see you in the next one.